This Week at NASA. The ignition sequence had started, but there was a cutoff. The scheduled May 19th launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft on the first commercial venture to the International Space Station was aborted with T minus 0.5 seconds left in the countdown. Engine controller noted high chamber pressure in engine five. Uh, software did what it was supposed to do, aborted uh, engine five, then we went through the remaining engine shutdown. Uh, we will go in and uh, try another another day on the 22nd. We're looking at a backup day on the 23rd as well. The 23rd, uh, looks like it's a good date from the trajectory and uh, the station crew says they're ready to support. The SpaceX demonstration flight to the ISS calls for an extensive set of tests requiring the Dragon spacecraft to show that it can move precisely in orbit and approach the space station carefully. Only after these tests are successful will the spacecraft be allowed to approach the orbiting laboratory close enough to be grappled and berthed by the station's robotic arm. And here we go, hatches are open. The three newest residents of the International Space Station were greeted by their Expedition 31 crewmates after their Soyuz capsule docked safely with the orbiting laboratory following its two-day plus journey from Kazakhstan. Soyuz Commander Gennady Padalka NASA flight engineer Joe Acaba and Russian flight engineer Sergei Revin are slated to spend the next five months on the station. Expedition 31 will conclude and 32 will begin when Oleg Kononenko, Andrei Kuipers, and Don Pettit return to Earth on July 1st after spending more than six months aboard the ISS. When the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft returns to Earth after its mission to the International Space Station, it will depend on a heat shield material called Pika-X to protect it during re-entry. The heat shield material called Phenolic Impregnated Carbon Ablator was developed in partnership with NASA Ames Research Center. So we were looking for an advanced material that had, was lighter weight, could withstand more extreme environments, and would be essentially safer and more rugged for planetary missions. PICA-X samples were tested at NASA Ames using special facilities to simulate planetary re-entry temperatures and high-speed atmospheric flows. During these tests, the surface temperature of the heat shield material reached approximately 3,450 degrees Fahrenheit, almost twice as hot as molten lava. PICA has proved its effectiveness on the heat shield that protected the Stardust capsule during its return to Earth in January of 2006. It'll be used by the Mars Science Laboratory to land its rover Curiosity on the Red Planet. And of course, when the first commercial cargo resupply mission to the ISS returns a payload safely back to Earth, Pika-X will have played a major role in Dragon's success. Evaluation of a key component of the J2X engine continues at the Stennis Space Center. NASA recently conducted a long-duration test of the J2X power pack, a system of components on the top portion of the J2X engine that helps the engine produce thrust. The 340-second test was designed to operate the power pack turbo pumps over a range of speeds by varying the gas generator valve positions. Continued testing of the J2X, which will help propel NASA's new space launch system, are scheduled through the summer. The SLS is the new heavy lift launch vehicle that will expand human presence beyond low Earth orbit and with the Orion crew capsule, enable new missions of exploration across the solar system. All of whom have achieved distinction beyond measure. The state of Alabama celebrated its space exploration heritage, designating May 3rd as NASA Day in Alabama. The state legislature commended the Marshall Space Flight Center for its role in space exploration and as an engine of economic development and the anchor of the aerospace industry in North Alabama. I salute Marshall and NASA. When we look at the economic impact that they have on our state, uh, it's unprecedented. And they are right there with us as uh, Alabamians. Marshall has an estimated $2.9 billion economic impact on the region. It's nearly 6,000 government and contractor personnel, 90% of whom are college-educated, make NASA the third largest employer in Huntsville. 
For more than a half a century, we have embodied the values of determination, achievement, and a thirst for knowledge that made this nation great. We are still a symbol of this nation's greatness and promise. Marshall, the center that developed the Saturn V moon rocket in the 1960s, is now working on the Space Launch System, a long-range rocket designed to take us beyond Earth orbit. NASA astronaut T.J. Creamer, who lived and worked on the International Space Station, spoke to groups of local students visiting the state capitol. We want to be able to extend the humanity and go farther and learn more about Earth, learn more about the sciences, um, to be able to make tomorrow better. NASA is a national treasure. It truly is a national treasure. And we're just so proud to share in that and what we're able to develop in North Alabama with the great state of Alabama. Thrill Seekers had a blast learning about space during Education Day at King's Dominion. Students and teachers applied the math and science they've used this school year to fun problem-solving activities at the theme park. The Langley Research Center had interactive exhibits where park goers could learn how astronauts live and work in space, win prizes by answering NASA technology-related questions, and playing the NASA Spin the Wheel game. They also explored how riding a roller coaster produces G-forces just as a spacecraft does when it launches into space. There were also exhibits highlighting NASA aeronautics missions and displays from the Science Museum of Virginia. Solar ray, let's get some energy in there. Sounder, let's make some noise. What are we feeling? We got to get something going now. Nearly 100 students converged on Walt's flight facility recently for the annual Inspire the Next Generation Day. Well, what we're doing here today is we're actually doing Inspire the Next Generation, where we have parents that work here at Wallops bringing their students in to uh, try out a few things that we actually do here. We're a polar orbit, sun synchronous with the sun so that uh, our solar array is always pointing towards the sun. Once we get done coloring and designing our rockets, we're going to prep them for flight. It's fun, like I get to um, like go with my mom and build kites and build solar powered cars. It's really, really fun. I've had a good time. I'm hoping to be a civil engineer when I get older, so it's really fun. The young explorers learned about science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM careers they could pursue with NASA, the Navy, the Coast Guard, NOAA, Fish and Wildlife, and the Marine Science Consortium. I'm Jane Jett Gensler. I work in the International Space Station Program Office of External Integration at the NASA Johnson Space Center. I was born in Bangkok, Thailand, and I immigrated to the U.S. Uh, when I was about two or three years old, uh, moved uh, to Dallas, Texas, and I basically grew up there and um, went to school uh, at the University of Texas at Austin. I uh, got my chemical engineering bachelor's degree from UT. The International Space Station um, is a wonderful program. Um, a lot of people in the general public um, don't know that we even have an International Space Station. So um, from that standpoint, our office does a lot of external communications and we get out there, we do a lot of public outreach, making sure that the public is aware of all the benefits that ISS you know, has provided and is able to offer. We want to make sure that everybody knows that it's a manned station. We've uh, been manned for over 10 years. We're up there seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and we've provided great benefits um, to humankind, and we're still doing that with all the utilization that we're um, currently ramping up. We've completed assembly, and we're working on all the research that's going to help us go and explore beyond low Earth orbit. One of the most fun things I've done out here at NASA is I was able to go and watch a Soyuz launch out in Kazakhstan. I love to travel, especially as a family, love to travel outside the country, but this was the first time um, I've traveled that far away, I guess, to an exotic location other than Thailand, where I'm from. Just being there and being a part of human space flight was amazing. And liftoff of the Soyuz rocket. I feel the liftoff, the clock has started. 50 years ago, on May 24, 1962, Mercury astronaut Scott Carpenter launched from Cape Canaveral aboard the Aurora 7 spacecraft. 
The flight was the second manned orbital mission of the Mercury program, following John Glenn's Friendship 7 flight three months earlier. Like Glenn, Carpenter circled the Earth three times. The focus of the five-hour mission was on science and included the first study of liquids and weightlessness and Earth photography. A targeting mishap during re-entry took the spacecraft about 250 miles off course. However, Carpenter and Aurora 7 were safely recovered after splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. And that's this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, or to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.